and welcome to Asian Pulse TV, an informative and resourceful station. I'm your host Manbi Randhawa and today we are broadcasting from the unceded territories of Silver Tooth Nation, Mokim, Katsi and Kwantlen Nation. We feel very blessed for the generosity of the First Nation people who shared their traditional and ancestral land with us to live, laugh and grow. November 11th is a federal holiday and it is also known as Veterans Day or Remembrance Day. It is observed annually honoring military veterans of the United States Armed Forces. Victoria Square Remembrance Day ceremony will take place at the Cenotaph between Camby and Hamilton, attracting thousands of people from all walks of life. It's a day to observe thousands of men and women who fought in World War I and II, Gulf War and all other wars. They fought for our country so that we can enjoy the freedom that we have today. This is a day not to forget our veterans and also you will find people wearing poppy flowers as a brooch. Please attend any of the ceremonies, buy these flowers, these brooch to show your support on this day. Diwali is also known as Dipavli in many parts of the world. It is a Hindu festival of light that symbolizes the victory of good over evil and triumph of light over darkness. Diwali is celebrated during the darkest days of October or November which is a period called Kartika in a Hindu calendar and this year Diwali is falling on November 12th, 2023. Wish you all a very happy Diwali. On this auspicious occasion of Diwali, Prayers are offered to Goddess Lakshmi and Lord Ganesha to seek blessings of wealth, prosperity and some also seek wisdom. Happy Diwali from our Asian Pulse family to your family. Movember is also an annual event involving the growing of moustaches during the month of November to raise awareness of men's health issues such as prostate cancer, testicular cancers, men's suicide and anything related to that. Movember is our time to unite, take on mental health, suicide, prostate cancer, testicle cancer and coming along to show your support. Flu shots are available at your nearest pharmacy as we are already aware that COVID is still lingering around. Another booster has been possible for people from certain age and whose immune system is compromised. So make sure you're checking your email to see if there is any notification about booster shoot. If there is any, please go get it and stay safe. Now is the time to take a short break, but we will be right back from after we hear some words from our sponsors. Bollywood Banquet Hall and Conference Center located at Pile Business Center at 201-8166-128 Street in Surrey. Thank you sponsors. We have in our studio Mr. Mike Chand and his son Sahil Chand. As you already know and you have, might have seen in the news about Sahil Chand who is a 16 year old but he was beaten by a hockey player and a hockey coach Spencer Mayers. But Spencer Mayer was let free. The father is here to seek justice for his son. Let's talk to them. Hello and welcome to Asian Pals. And I have two very special guests today, and we're going to be talking to them. And I don't want to give, up, give out too many things, what we are here to talk about, but I think you'll find out this is very important that I want you all to pay attention, and you be the judge. And uh, we have brought Shahil Chand and his dad, Mike Chand, in our studios to talk about there was a court ruling that came down not too long ago. And I want them to talk to you how that went and what was it all about. So welcome Sahil and welcome Mike. Thank yeah. And thank you for taking this time out to be able to come and talk to our audience, to our viewers. Okay, in the nutshell, I think maybe should I ask you or your dad what happened? What, how it started and how are we here talking about it? Those people that don't know anything or they didn't hear anything about your case, your incident, and... Well, uh, it was just me. Like, I always walked the same route as I would always walk in my, in my neighborhood. Like, no one had any problems with me or anything like that. Just, like, normal, just, like, on, like, a run at night. And, uh, the, and then I think I was just passing, like, 
I think I was passing some sort of like, it was some sort of vehicle, and then uh, the guy uh, like um, came in like with in his in his car and then got out, and then he was like, "Hey, uh, I saw you steal something," and I was like, "No, I didn't steal anything," and like it was like this whole thing that went on. It was like it made me like super nervous, obviously on the inside, because I didn't, I obviously didn't do it. Like I know I'm innocent already, so it makes me like more nervous, you know, being like accused of something that like I didn't actually do, and. Uh, when, like, when like, the, the accusations was over, like, it was happened so it happened like so fast. Like, I got hit, literally, like, like almost instantly, basically. Mm -hmm. And I was on like the ground, just basically, basically like, kind of like defend, like, right? Because obviously, I'm not like there, like being like, oh no, can't do anything about it. But like, I'm just trying to like. So you he know. knocked you, got out of the car, and he knocked you down. Yeah. It's it, accusing you that you stole something. Yes. Okay. Which I didn't. Yeah. And after a little bit of like him like punching me or whatever, right? Uh, he, when I was on the ground at some, at one point, he, uh, he filmed some sort of video. I think he was trying to get me to admit something that I didn't actually do, like, mm -hmm. on camera. So then he would have proof, even if I didn't do anything, basically. And I didn't give in. I was like, no, I'm not, I didn't, I didn't, like, say anything, basically. I didn't admit anything. I didn't admit anything I did was wrong or anything like that. And, um, while this is happening, uh, I think his dad, right? Yeah. His dad is uh, at the like the porch area of their house, like kind of like just like watching or whatever. And then they eventually come over, and they're like, "Hey, uh, if you ever come back here, uh, we'll call the cops on you, right?" Or like, "Hey, uh, you might get like you will get arrested or whatever, right?" And then the guy that attacked me said that he the next time he saw me, he'd uh, put a bill in the back of my head, and I just walked away and I was like very like bloody, you know, like. Like it was like so bad. Like I had like so a he punched you on the nose. Like everywhere, basically, yeah. like, any anywhere you can think of. Like, like yeah, yeah. What he did was he constantly punched and yeah. kicked my son in the face. Yeah, it was brutal. And there was nobody there, and nobody came. No, no, no. What time of the day was it? It was at night. Okay. Yeah. And I know that you were telling me that happened around. 26th of January, 2022. Yeah, around the January time, yes. Actually, yeah. was it right on the 26th of January, 2022? Yeah. Yeah. So then what happened after that? I know I'm very sorry because when you talk about any kind of this painful incidents, then the flashbacks come, right? Yeah. And I must apologize that maybe when you are talking to me, Maybe the, uh, your You'll brain is going 100,000 yeah. miles an hour, and it's just like it's happening to you right now. Yeah. It's very painful to yeah. know, and I want to acknowledge that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you like to say yeah, anything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So what happened after, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. So after that, um, obviously I had to go to the hospital, right, of course. Uh, and... Did you call your dad? Did you call? Oh him? yeah, oh yeah. I guess um, start from like I, I on the way like back home. I like called my dad and I was like, hey, uh, I basically just got assaulted, right? So then he came over, and then uh, after that, we, me, my dad, and one of like the uh, like the neighbor like like our neighbors. Basically, we all went over to we we called the police at this point. The police were there. And we all, like, all, all of us, like, basically all together went over to the house that I saw the, because the thing is, I saw the, I saw the guy come, like, basically park at that house, so I assumed that he lived there, mm -hmm. right? I assumed that he lived there at that point. So we all kind of just, like, went over there, and uh, the police went to go knock on, uh, knock on the door, right? And after that, uh, he basically, like, that night he was, like, arrested, but then he was, like, let go, like, after that basically, uh, and then after, like, all that happened, I had to go to the hospital. I didn't get, I didn't, luckily, thank goodness, I didn't have to get stitches. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, like, I'm just, like, happy that I didn't have to get stitches, honestly, for that kind of thing. Uh, and, yeah, the things that followed, I guess, is the, probably the next thing, right, you want to talk about? Uh, things that followed were, like, lots of uh, appointments with uh, my counselor, Lots of appointments, weekly check-ins. Sahil, can you tell her uh, how old this person was and how old you were at that time? Yeah. So at the time, I was 16, mm -hmm. and the guy was 20-something? 20 20, 24. 24. 24. Yeah, the guy was 24 at the time. 
I was 16. Actually 25. 25. Have you seen this yeah. guy before? No. Okay. I, have no, I have no clue who this individual was. Okay. Absolutely no clue, yeah. Uh, and the... Because you are very traumatized. Yeah. When you said you had to go and see the counselor on the weekly basis, yeah. and uh, that means there was so much trauma happening. And maybe also I want you to know that uh, Sahil is also autism child. So his the way he thinks sometimes it's not like normal kid. Sometimes it's a slow yeah thinking. It's, yeah. it's like um, takes like a, like it's like a longer process to kind of think of things. It takes a long time. Yeah. Yep. So uh, then after like the, the, during the counseling sessions, obviously it'd be like it would be like tough because then I'd have to like do like like remember everything that happened and it was just like obviously like very like hard for me. I, I, I didn't like trust like anyone new basically. Like it was like harder to trust like newer people. But I feel like there were some people that I met that like like na like that like kinda like healed like like my like kinda like not trusting anybody kind of fear. There were people that I met and there was also like my friend group who'd like stayed like like talk to me obviously like every day I have like long phone calls with friends and stuff like that talking about the situation and uh, them just being there for me and like it made me like really like really like get over like like quicker ish mm -hmm. I guess than I would not like I normally would right can I add on yes. one more thing yeah. when when Sahil and I went to the house we stayed on the street with the police was over at the house Spencer got up and said you f Hindu do you want some too and, and that's how you and that's, that's how, you know, I, I was, yeah. those are the words he used. Okay. So it took, and that was your final year of graduation too, because you just graduated, you are in Douglas College taking criminology and all that. So you started a school in September. Yeah, actually, all this happened halfway through my grade 11 year. Yeah. I was oh. in grade 11 still. I was half, okay. halfway through my grade 11 year. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then I, like, like obviously, so, like, uh, my, thank goodness, like, I always, like, like, focused, like, hard on trying to, like, not let my grades drop, obviously, because of the yeah, attack, you incident know. Happened, yeah, incident yeah. Yeah. I can see it's very painful even <laughs> to talk about it after so many years, because something like that, some people, it takes a long time to heal. This is, this is a trauma. You just have some people just learn to live with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I knew exactly what was going to happen. I didn't want to be there for it, honestly. I, I, knew, I, I knew it was going to be nothing. Nothing will come out of it. I knew nothing, yeah. I knew, yeah. It. I knew it before I even walked in. Before, like, anything. Like, I just knew. It was just... Whatever. It's so sad. Yeah. You know, to think that way that uh, when you say you are honest, you are a victim, and seems like nobody's listening to you. Yeah. yeah, it's always the other side, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So I think I will let your dad talk because he went to court yeah, and how absolutely. all those things happen yeah. in the court. Yeah, sure. no worries. Yeah. So, Mike, it's yes. your turn. <laughs> my turn. Well, as my son said, I was expecting the same thing. Yeah. Except for I was expecting a criminal charge. Yes. So when we walked into the courts, Obviously, the uh, Crown Council brought up a bunch of stuff that he's done. Uh, this person has also got a restraining order or, or a, a peace order that he assaulted or, or did something. They didn't bring that up. But anyhow, we got into court and the Crown obviously brought her stuff out. And then I listened to the other side. Mm -hmm. So that the defense in defense yeah. Because this person is, you know, plans on building or having a business, plans on on doing a cross-border business. They looked at his side, and they didn't even look at, first of all, my son is a minor. He's yeah. 16 yeah. years 16, old. Yeah. They didn't look at the uttering threat, which, you know, they say, okay, that was a plea bargain. At the moment when they, I did get a phone call from the courts about plea bargain, and I was, uh, our Crown Counsel had promised that he was going to get a criminal record out of this. Mm. Before you went Before I even went into court. So, 
reality is, is that I, we, what we did in that courthouse, it wasn't fair for what my son went through. Yes. No. Yes. Um, yes, a white person, uh, a brown boy. He's a person of color, yeah. A person of color. You know, I'm going to let the people decide on, on what, let the people so judge. So what the ruling was? Talk about... The ruling was, so he has gotten two years probation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, ten years without it, uh, he can't have any firearms. Okay. Uh, he has to go to a rehab and uh, he has a probation. He has to be see a probation officer. So rehab for what? Drinking? So he withdrawal? said, he, oh yes, so yes. he said that, his lawyer said that he had a drug issue. Okay. Uh, he had. He was on on uh, medications. His lawyer also said that he was shot six or three months, three or six months before this in this incident, and he was on medication. So that's what got him off. Was because of his problems. Mm -hmm. So to me, if a person uh, in this world now, if a person does drugs and beats or kills somebody, they can get away with, with our law. Yeah. Because the Crown has given up. The Crown has given up on every everybody out there, every family. Mm. They're not willing to fight the fight anymore. Yeah, because they don't believe in the system. Because the system is not there for them, because they feel they are defeated by the system. You know, and, and who has money or who can hire hotshot lawyers or expensive lawyers or whatever and yes. they're gonna represent and they they will be the one that's what the judgment gonna come down so why bother you know a person can do a theft in a store and will get a criminal record because yes. that's how system is now whether if you're whoever you are yeah but if a person beats up a minor yes and, and a minor with autism yes with the, you know, I could call it a disability and I could call it an ability yeah. because there's two types. Yeah. Yeah. So now you beat up a, a, boy, a, a boy who has got that and you get away with yeah. or have, have drug problems. And what kind of precedence is the court system is setting that you can be fine and if there is any other kid that goes to the court with autism or any kind of disability, then they think, oh, well, that happened before, so that's fine. It, they don't pay no so attention, I totally right? Agree. Yeah. 100%. So, yes. Yeah. So then that's what the ruling was. That's, that's what the ruling was. They gave me $300 uh, for Sahil's AirPods, because I lost them. That he lost. <laughs> and I think Sahil is thinking about donating that $300. Yeah, definitely. Because as we say, that it's not about money, it's about the principle of, of having people like this loose on the streets. Yep. Yeah. So what is your message today? What do you want to tell the people that are watching you? How are they able to support you? Well, we had the story from the beginning to the outcome. Now, what would you want the people that are watching both of you, especially you, what do you want them to think, do, or protest? This cannot happen again, or uh, what? What is the message here? Um, I think that, like, I think people should kind of like think more about like how I feel like the uh, the system. The system, yeah, basically, like that, that's kind of like the main thing. It's like how the system, like, it seems like the system won't do anything unless you're dead. Yeah. Like, it seems like. It seems like if I die, if I die that night, then they'll act on it, right? So like obviously since I didn't die, but I'm traumatized for my life, they didn't they don't care. It's like, oh uh, whatever, like uh, real re rehabilitation, no charge, whatever, doesn't matter. It seems like just it's like that the, that's the case, right? And that's not really like fair because it sends a bit like that sends a message to like some message to like everyone that assaulting is like okay, like it's like you won't get like you won't get like any sort of criminal record off of it because it's like apparently to them they can they would consider it like a minor thing which is not okay i don't think that's the right thing at all 
And in the other word, and I think we have also have to think about who is committing the crime. If you are that person committing a crime, oh my goodness. yeah, you no. will be put away. I mean, yeah, yeah, you will be gone. I'll be gone. It's yeah, just no. because the way the system looks at who is committing the crime. Yeah, and I think privilege, upper class people with money, and that's what happened in this case, and that's why we are talking about it. So the system yeah. is failing. The system is failing in the families. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I also have something to say. Go ahead. I, I would like people out there in public to realize what actually happened. And it's not just to my son. I'm sure it's happened many times. People don't have the voice to bring this out. Yeah. They need to get out and talk. Because if we don't get together with families, if we don't have a protest, or if we don't talk to the government about what's going on here, how the system works, all the family has lost. We are nothing. And we lost all the hope that everybody has in the criminal justice system. Why would they want to go to criminal justice system and get traumatized again? If it's not for you, why bother then, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think you are doing a lot more. You are looking into... I'm, I'm looking yeah. into uh, uh, hiring a lawyer for a, um, for a civil suit. Yes, and I'm also looking into getting more support, getting the word. As I'm on, on this live here today, yeah. it's because I would like this to go out to everybody. And you are just one person. Your son yes. is here. It's just, it happens every day but in I'm, the system, and they don't yes. come on the air like this and talk. But I'm also worried about other families. Please have the voice. Please understand what autism means. Understand what, what these kids go through. And then... Balance that out to see a person that age can actually beat up a vulnerable kid. That's the most important thing the family have to realize. Thank you both for coming. I'm looking at the clock. We're running out of time. Thank you. Yeah. And thank, thank you, you very us. much for I coming. You. Thank you so yeah. much. And uh, I'm going to give you the number for Mike. And if you are that person that something like that has happened to you, he's here. He's an advocate. He became an activist. You can always call him up and talk to him one to one and ask him what kind of support does he need or for his son so we can build the movement that it doesn't happen to another family ever again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You were going to say something? No, I, I, was just, I was just thinking about how, just a last word, the RCMPs in, in, uh, in Surrey when this all happened, they're very supportive. Yes. They did, they, and I, I get the frustrations of the law now. They take this a person into court, and the court releases them. Yeah. This, it's called a catch and release program, yeah. is yeah. what we're running in our court system right now. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to both of you for coming in and sharing your story so that public knows and knows how they can support you to find justice for your child. Moving to our announcement section, just a friendly reminder about the upcoming events in our community. Showman Entertainment and SS Productions have collaborated to have a stand-up comedy show of Indian comic Parvinder Singh in Surrey and Brampton. Comic Parvinder Singh with an Instagram page under iComicParvinder will be delighting his audience on November 16th, which is a Thursday, at Bell Performing Arts Centre. The show would start at 7 and end at 8.30 p.m. So tickets will be available on the official website of Bell Center. But for further information, you can call Harpreet at 604-446-8376. Touching Lives Foundation is doing its fifth annual Christmas party fundraiser on December 9th at Empire Banquet Hall in Surrey at 6 p.m. This year's proceeds will benefit SARA for Women's Transition House, so get your tickets and show your support. For more information, call Josie Chauhan at 778-892-7388 or call Neera Wohra at 604-603-4684. Canadian Empowered Women of Fiji Foundation is doing their toy drive on December 9th at Taj Park Convention Centre starting at 6.30 p.m. Tickets are $1.40 per person and children under the age of 10 are free. This is their second Christmas dinner and dance, so make sure you get your tickets. But you can call 604-825-8261, 604-825-8261.
you can call 604-831-0240. Angel Music Production is presenting New Year's Eve a party on December 31st at 6 p.m. at Bombay Banquet Hall, which is located at 7476-135 Street in Surrey. There will be live band concert, grand lavish buffet dinner, DJ, dance, games and whatnot. Tickets are going to sell pretty fast, so reserve them before they are gone. Ticket prices ranges from $1.65 and goes up till $1.85 for VIP tickets. For more information, please call Mike Singh at 604-818-9405 or you can call 236-999-0400. Another person that can be reached out is Neelesh Prasad at 403-919-9670. Sikh Nation Blood Donation Campaign Against Genocide The Canadian Sikhs are known for running the largest blood donation campaign for the last 25 years. It's time for them to shine again. The slogan for 2023 World Blood Donor Day campaign, Give Blood, Give Plasma, Share Life, Share Often focuses on patients requiring lifelong transfusion support and underlines the role of every single person who would be playing a part by giving the valuable gift of blood or plasma. If you have missed our today's show, you can watch it again tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. and again on Saturday at 5.30 p.m. on Shaw Cable Network. Asian Pulse brings three different shows at three different times. First one is Fiji in Focus, which you can watch on Tuesdays at 10 p.m., Thursdays at 2.30 p.m., and Sundays at 4 p.m. Bula Beats on Thursdays at 10 p.m., and again on Sundays at 4.30 p.m. Kamila Singh Show is broadcasted every Monday at 10 a.m., and again on Sundays at 8.30 p.m. All of our shows are also uploaded on our YouTube channel under the name Kamila Singh Show. Today, my parting thoughts to do, parting thoughts are keep your distance from people who will never admit they are wrong and always try to make you feel like it's your fault. Thank you for spending part of your day with me. I'm your host, Manbir Randhawa. Take good care of yourself. I'll see you guys next week.